In this video, we're looking at equations of conic sections. We've actually done problems of this sort before with parabola and circle, but we'll take it a little bit further to the other conic sections, ellipse and hyperbola. So a refresher of what we've covered in the past. Let's say, for example, we had y equals x squared minus 6x plus 10. Definitely, we have the equation of a parabola. We have y as a first degree variable, and x is a second degree variable, has this exponent of 2. We could make a graph of this parabola, choosing some values for x, substituting and then finding the value for y, and then we'd have an ordered pair xy to plot on a graph, and doing that over and over will get enough points where we can see the shape of the parabola. We might even use what we know of the vertex, that the vertex is found at the point negative b over 2a, where a is our leading coefficient, in this case it's a 1, b would be our coefficient of x, negative 6. So this expression will show us that our vertex is found when the x-coordinate is, now the numerator, that's a negative, negative 6. So I'll simplify to a positive 6. 2 times a is 2. So our x-coordinate is at the point 3, and then we would take this value, put it in place of x here and here to find the y-coordinate. But if we do some algebraic moves to this expression on the right side, we can get the equation into a form that gives some important characteristics of the graph a lot more quickly. So let's go through what those steps were, and basically it's all about completing the square. For completing the square, we're interested in taking these first two terms of the second degree variable, so I'll group x squared minus 6x, and leave the plus 10 to the side. To complete the square, we're looking at this coefficient. We need to cut it in half and then square it. That will give us the third term of a perfect square trinomial. In this one, negative 6 cut in half is negative 3, and then negative 3 squared would equal a positive 9. So we need to have a plus 9 to complete the square. Now to balance this plus 9, I'll just tack a minus 9 on the end here. So we have not changed the value of this entire expression. We threw in the plus 9 to complete the square, but then we balanced it out with a minus 9 back here. There are several approaches you could use at this step. I'm just going to choose to do it this way. You might see some other ways you could do it to complete the square, but we should all arrive at the same answer. And I will use this approach for the rest of our problems in this video. So now let's take care of completing the square. This perfect square trinomial will be factored as x minus 3 squared. A quick shortcut is this coefficient here, cut in half, is the number that we see inside the, the parentheses, in the binomial. So x minus 3 squared, or if you think of your usual steps for factoring, we would see x minus 3 times x minus 3, which is the x minus 3 squared. But the form in which it will be most useful for us will be written this way, as the 1 binomial squared. Now let's simplify what happened to our numbers back here plus 10 minus 9 is a plus 1. Now that we've completed the square, and it's in this form, we see some characteristics of the graph of the parabola. We can match this equation up to a standard form of a parabola that we have. The standard form, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. This form, well, let's first think about it in terms of function transformations. The x minus h means that we have a shift to the right by h units, and this plus k means we are shifting up by k units. Those two will have an effect on where our vertex is. We can compare this to the graph of y equals x squared. We know this is a parabola with the vertex right at the origin. Pardon this very crude sketch. There's a bad sketch of y equals x squared. Minus h means we'd be shifting this shape over some h units to the right, and the plus k means we'd be shifting up k units, and now we'd see our parabola in this shifted location. What do we know of our graph once it's in this form? We know where the vertex is. It's at the point 3, 1. Remember the form uses x minus h, so when we see x minus 3, we know the x-coordinate of the vertex is positive 3. It's exactly what we found by this expression up here, and we could actually do some not too difficult algebraic steps to show why we get this formula, negative b over 2a, for the x-coordinate of the vertex. But we're just interested in pointing out that in this form, it's very clear to us. 
And do you remember when we found the x coordinate equals 3 up here, what did we say about how you find the y coordinate of that vertex point? We would need to take this 3 and put it into this equation in place of x to find the y coordinate. We know we should be coming up with 1, but let's just do a quick demo of that. y equals 3 squared minus 6 times 3 plus 10. So 9 minus 18 plus 10 equals 1. So a quick example of something that hopefully we're familiar with that we'll be seeing very similar moves in the upcoming examples. Let's do another quick review of this type of problem that we did with circles. For this example, we are taking this equation of a circle and we're going to produce a graph. We know it's an equation of a circle because both variables x and y are second degree, have an exponent of 2, and their coefficients match. They both have a coefficient of positive 1. To make the graph of this circle, it did require completing the square. First, let's group together the x variables and the y variables. And I'll choose to take the constant and put it over to the right side. Completing the square with the x's, cutting this coefficient in half, negative 4 cut in half is negative 2, and then squared gives us a positive 4. Now I'm going to balance out this positive 4 on the other side of the equation, so I'll just need to match it with plus 4. Remember, in the example we just looked at with the parabola, we were completing the square and balancing it both on the same side of the equation. That's why we would use a plus 4 and then later on on that side a minus 4. But this time we're balancing it on opposite sides of the equation, so we balance it exactly the same way. Add 4 to the left side, we add 4 to the right side. Moving on to the y variables, the negative 6 cut in half, negative 3. Square it, we get a positive 9. And let's balance it with a plus 9 on the right side. Now let's go back to completing the squares. With the x's, this becomes an x minus 2 squared. The y's, this is a y minus 3 squared. On the right side, 16. Now we have something that really matches our form for the equation of a circle. Remember, this one was x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. h and k are the coordinates for the center of the circle. So for this equation, we see that our center is at the point 2, 3. On the right side, this constant is the radius squared. So we know that our radius is the square root of 16, 4. So doing some algebraic moves where we complete the square puts the equation into a form that matches one of our four conic sections. In this case, it was circle. And once we have it in this form, we can very easily see some characteristics of the graph, like where is the center, the radius. With the parabola, we'll see some other aspects, and again with ellipse and hyperbola. So let's go over to those four conic sections and go through the basics and what sorts of forms of equations we see.